Okay, hello and welcome everyone. In this video, I'm gonna discuss several of the foundational economic concepts that we need to establish our framework and foundation to approach analysis yet to come. So I'm gonna talk about scarcity and choice. I'll talk about opportunity cost, comparative advantage, self-interest, and marginal analysis. So scarcity, it's truly at the heart of economics. It's the basic realization that we have more possible uses for the resources around us than, those, than the amount of the resources available. So the idea is people have unlimited wants. There's a lot of different things you could do with our resources, but there's only so much to go around. We can think of resources really broadly. So it could be in terms of like the standard factors of production, land, labor, and capital, or entrepreneurial talent, as some authors will add. But we can also think of resources more broadly. We can think in terms of the money, the time, the attention span that's involved. And clearly these things can be spent on one thing or another, but typically not both at the same time. As a result, people face trade-offs. So the trade-offs mean, well, you're going to have to do one thing or you could do its alternative. And in doing so, this is where people incur opportunity costs. So opportunity costs refer to whatever is sacrificed or foregone when you do one thing instead of another. So clearly, in the presence of scarcity, when we face a trade-off, we do one thing with our resources, we give up the ability to do something else. As a result, we have incurred an opportunity cost, right? So the opportunity cost is the sacrifice. It's the cost of what's lost. It's defined as the value of the next highest alternative use of your resources. It's whatever you're most giving up when you do one thing instead of another. That's what we mean by opportunity cost. This gives rise to the important concept of comparative advantage. So comparative advantage literally is defined as whoever has the lowest opportunity cost in the production of some good or service. Right? The idea is like whoever has the lowest cost, whoever gives up the least to produce that thing, holds the comparative advantage in the production of that good or service. This actually naturally gives rise to the division of labor, to specialization according to comparative advantage, where economics suggests, demonstrates that what should actually happen is whoever has the comparative advantage, whoever gives up the least to do something, ought to specialize in providing it. And then we ought to trade to be able to obtain the other things that you haven't produced. Obviously, if you're specializing, you're making only that thing and not the other things. This makes sense when you're able to specialize according to comparative advantage, and then economic surplus is generated by virtue of the fact that whoever is actually doing the production has the lowest possible costs. The last two principles are self-interest and marginal analysis. So economics assumes that people are selfish and rational. Part of this is the self-interest assumption. So we're assuming that economic agents, which we're thinking of as people, households, firms, whoever's making the economic decision, is going to seek after the actions that are going to improve their own well-being. And we're going to assume that they're going to try not to go out of their own way to get in their own way, right? People are not going to try to voluntarily work against their own interests. That's what our principle of self-interest is assuming. Lastly, marginal analysis means that when people are considering the full set of costs and benefits involved, they should actually break these down and think about what's the incremental contribution of doing one more unit of the particular activity. So what's the incremental benefit or the incremental cost, right? Like if I decide to, if I decide to go and work out, what's the incremental benefit for spending another minute, another 15 minutes? Or if I decide to hit the snooze button, what's the incremental benefit associated with doing so? Well, at the same time, there's a cost. So what's the incremental cost of working out for another minute or another 15 minutes or sleeping and hitting the snooze button again? There's a cost. Very often, this is an opportunity cost. You lose the ability to use that time for something else. Well, anyway, what marginal analysis is doing is it's saying, well, we ought to compare the incremental, the marginal benefit to the incremental marginal cost. If the marginal benefit exceeds the marginal cost, you should keep doing that activity. We're assuming over time the marginal benefit's going to be decreasing and eventually, though we start off with a marginal benefit bigger than the marginal cost and continue doing the activity, eventually marginal benefit becomes equal to marginal cost. And that's where we've optimized. Or if you're currently at a point where your marginal cost is bigger than your marginal benefit, you should do less of the activity until the point where the benefit's large relative to the cost. And again, there you'll have a situation where marginal benefit again is equal to marginal cost. Right? The optimal level of a particular activity is where the marginal benefit is equal to the marginal cost. All right, so together, these five sort of principles provide like the first installment of a really important portion of our foundation for economic analysis to come.